Shall I start or shall I wait? Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining today. Today is March 12, 2022. We are so grateful to have our presenter, Franz Kappas. He joined us second time to talk about philosophy behind Shiatsu practice. We are Shiatsu practitioners. We are sending a healing energy to everybody in the world. And uh, without this peaceful, happy, balanced energy, we cannot keep going. We cannot send in a wonderful energy to others. We need to be, we need to feel peace within. We need all the people to join us, feel peace, balance, happy. And let's go to Franz Kappas. Thank you, Franz. You're welcome. So my name is Franz Kopers. I'm from Belgium. My mother was Hungarian, so I'm kind of a real European. My father was from, from Irish descendants. Anyway, I, to make a long story short, uh, I was a medical student. I got in contact with Dr. Mark von Kaumberg who just came back from the United States where he studied at the East-West Center at the Kushi Institute with Michio Kushi. And uh, by chance, I met him in a health food restaurant. We started talking and he caught my interest. He was giving lectures. I went to his lectures and I decided to go to the United States to study more about it for a vacation time. And instead of one month, I stayed there for six months and I stopped my medical studies because oriental medicine uh, was more appealing to me. Uh, I did my first Yatsu class in Boston in 1972. So that's about 50 years ago now. And, uh, but when I came back, I was there in, in America two times six months. When I came back, I started a health food restaurant, which was quite successful. After seven years, I sold it. And then I went to Japan. Of course, meanwhile, I was doing many classes, many uh, workshops of Shiatsu. That time there were no schools. There were only uh, uh, Japanese teachers coming along in Amsterdam, London, Paris. To study more and to develop. But then I went to Japan. I studied at the Iokai Center for about six months two classes every day almost. And when I came back, I felt ready to start a practice. Then with some friends and we founded the Belgian Shiatsu Federation where I was president for almost 20 years. And then at some point we joined the European Shiatsu Federation where I was secretary first and then also president for Is he gone? Franz, you are muted. We cannot hear you. Can you please unmute yourself? Can you hear me now? Yes, yes, thank you. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes, we can. Okay, so anyway, I studied with several Japanese uh, teachers um and one of them is uh, harada sensei who you, who you can see here on the picture behind me and he was a buddhist priest of the shittennoji a big uh, buddhist temple in osaka he was also martial arts specialist and uh, he was uh, practicing a, a special style of shiatsu which is uh, which he called Jigen Ryu, but it's his own version of the Hakko Ryu uh, Shiatsu School, which is quite famous in Japan. Anyway, um, his the idea, and he was thinking about why, why, how Shiatsu works, and maybe it's interesting 
to know and to realize how uh, what the effects of shiatsu can be on which level because as many things also modern medicine uh, we have possibilities and we have limits and to have a good idea of what we can promise people or the expectations we can have of our treatments uh, we, we have to be aware of certain things and one of the things which are quite important for me is um, the fact that uh, shiatsu in itself is not enough health uh, comes from a total lifestyle people smoking eating lots of meat and sugar you can of course uh, alleviate their suffering a little bit with shiatsu but you cannot cure and as as we said uh, last time uh, cure does not come by 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 chance, cure comes by adapting to the laws of nature, you might say, as is uh, written in the Nei King Suwen, where the emperor asking the, his doctor Ling Pi uh, why the people get sick if the nature and life is so, so well organized. And the answer of the doctor is, that is because they do not, do not live along the uh, laws of nature. We get sick because we do not understand the laws of nature. So the first thing, if you want to cure somebody or yourself, you have to try to find out the laws of nature. And these are laws that do not change. In Japan, they, they call it Uh, we have technical problems. Franz, uh, you are muted again. Please, yes. You still hear me? Yes. Okay. Thank you. In, 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 in Japan, they call it fudo chi. That means that there is some truth which never moves, which never changes. And I think as a practitioner, that's what we have to think about, not about the changing systems and changing views and changing methods, but the basics of, 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 of shiatsu uh, and, and, and which never, things which never change, truth which never change, rules which never change. Maybe I said that last time also, I have a friend who studied in, uh, no, who lived in Hawaii and he was treated by an old Chinese uh, doctor. And when he came back to Belgium to live with his family again, he asked this Chinese doctor, which, uh, if he had any advice because he wanted to get treated in, in, in Belgium as well. And this, uh, old doctor, he said, you have to look somebody with experience. And then he came to me with uh, this friend, I was his name. And uh, I asked him, what kind of uh, treatment, what kind of points did your master or this old doctor use? And he just was pointing to uh, large intestine four and, and gallbladder 31 and stomach uh, 36, the most basic points. I personally think that uh, the more you, you advance, the more simple you can, you should make things. And, at, and anyway, every, every problem, every sickness is, is very complicated. There's many factors influencing, but the moment that you treat, your treatment should be as simple as possible. That's a basic law also of oriental medicine. The treatment should be simple. Observation and then action as simple as possible. Because what we do is not curing people. What we do is only uh, helping natural cure or self cure or, or spontaneous cure happen. And we have to wonder why it does not work. Why does self-cure not happen? And take away whatever blocks it. 
that can be lifestyle, that can be thinking, that can be a lot of things. It can be food, can be environment. So what is blocking the spontaneous healing? So I'd like to go back to page two now and maybe make it a little bit bigger. Is that possible? No, I don't see it's possible. <laughs> yeah, you're Dan, still with me. Dan says she can make it bigger. Well, I be, before we start uh, with the uh, quest or the the question how does shiatsu work, we have to kind of first have an idea what, what health means. And health means, as far as the World Health Organization is concerned, it's, it's and that's already something very positive, that they think it's not only the absence of, um, of symptoms, but it's a, con it's a condition of general, physical, mental, emotional, and social well-being. But that's very vague and not very practical if you want to help people. It's, it's very superficial. That's why uh, we may have to kind of think about what, what, what can be a better definition. From the point of uh, Oriental medicine, actually, uh, the uh, capacity of adaptation to change is a very big and a very important basic element of uh, health. The capacity of changing, adapting to the change of seasons, to change of work, change of environment, and so on and so on. So adaptivity, and in fact, that, that, that's, that's uh, Darwinism, right? It's Darwinism. Sometimes they translate his idea by the, uh, uh, the survival of the fittest, but it's not the survival of the fittest. It's the survival of the, mo the, 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 the being which is most adaptive. And to be adaptive and to have this adapt adaptability, one has to be uh, flexible. If you're not flexible, then you cannot adapt to change. So flexibility, physical, emotional, mental, and actually, especially that lately we, we really need with all the disasters happening, we need to be very flexible and adapt to all these difficult changes and difficulties. But the interesting, interesting thing is in Japanese, I, if I remember, uh, gyo means exercise, but also challenge and also difficulty. So every difficulty is a challenge and a training, a way of training ourselves. Anyway, uh, maybe to have a... We still cannot put this, make this bigger, please. The text, is that not possible? No, I don't see anything moving. I... Dawn is trying to do it, and she's looking for the... Mm. But no, normally, if you put on control and then you scroll with your mouse, you can make it bigger, no? Control and scroll. No, anyway, so I have to rely on my bad eyesight and my memory. Anyway, Nyoiti Sakurasawa is a Japanese man who, uh, of course, lived, uh, is born in Japan. And at some point, one of the first Japanese people who, uh, oh, that's, no, you're too far now. Please go back. I'm, I'm now at, at a criteria for health. Yes, criteria for health, some criteria of good health. That's very important. That's the, but it's moving all the time. Okay, thank you. So he, he 
was a Japanese person who lived in Paris. Paris for Japanese people is a very attractive city. Uh, and it keeps moving here. Okay, anyway, and he had, uh, he wanted to have a better definition of health. And he came up with seven different points, which were very important. And these points or these uh, symptoms, you might call them, they occur before you have any other symptoms be because you get headaches or a rash or back pain or whatever. And the first signs of sickness coming up is the lack of good appetite, for instance. A good appetite is very important. If you have a good appetite, if you're healthy, you have a good appetite. That means for food, for activity, and also uh, for sex. Uh, in the Eastern medicine, sexuality and the sexual appetite is a proof of health. So good appetite means that you can enjoy a simple meal. Good appetite does not mean you like to go to five-star restaurants. No, in fact, good appetite means that you even can enjoy a piece of bread. Uh, the second point, and these, these three first points are more the physical ones. The second point is no fatigue or, or good sleep. They go together, of course. Good sleep means, in the eyes of Osawa, that when you go to sleep, you almost immediately fall asleep. If necessary, you can sleep on a mat. You don't need a bed, you can sleep on a mat like cats and dogs can do. So also good sleep for Osama meant uh, that uh, you can put your internal uh, wake up watch. If you decide in the evening, I have to get up at six in the morning, then automatically you get up at six in the morning. So you don't need a, how you call that, this a réveil in French. You don't need a, uh, <clears throat> a device to wake you up. And the third point is, oh, good sleep means also that you do not dream too much or only uh, real dreams, no nightmares and so on. Of Osawa, he said that if you have nightmares, you also have daymares. So if you have very strange dreams at night, something is wrong, is going, you have like at night dreaming you, is. Okay. So I may, maybe I repeat, so good sleep is very important. It's called nowadays the new smoking if you don't sleep well. Good sleep means you go to bed immediately, you can sleep on a, on a mat, it, you, even without a bed. You get up when you decide to get up. And so your automatic uh, uh, wake up call is, uh, is, uh, is sent by, by your brain. Also no fatigue. No fatigue, it's very important because if you're tired all the time, it's not a good sign. It's the first step of almost any disease. I had uh, some time ago for a shiatsu conference, a, um, uh, my topic was fatigue. I started studying a little bit about it and any, 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 any disease starts with fatigue. And it's one of the first signs. And if you have that, you better try to find out why, where it comes from. Because if you do not change it, if you do not, uh, if you cannot solve that problem, then automatically something more worse will happen. So the three first points are more physical ones. The three next ones are more, uh, psychological ones, you might call them. And one of them is sense of humor. So people that lose their sense of humor or have no sense of humor, that's a very bad sign. Uh, people like uh, Putin, for instance, <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> I can't help myself. But anyway, <laughs> uh, a, 
a, a person who has no sense of humor is a very dangerous person because generally these people take themselves too seriously and they, they, they try to dominate other people. They impose themselves on other people. No sense of humor is really a very big disease. The fifth point is to be alert. Like your capacity of reacting, of course, many people react quickly, but in the wrong way, but clear and straight and uh, appropriate uh, reaction on things, which is very useful if you drive a car, for instance. All the time, unexpected uh, situations occur. Sometimes you have to choose between giving gas or putting on the brake, uh, put your foot on the brake. You have to be very alert uh, because we talk about the war in, uh, in, in, in the east of Europe, but sometimes also driving a car can be very dangerous and it's almost like war, the way people behave to, with, uh, on, 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 the, on the roads. So to be alert, quick reaction, but right reaction at the right moment. And then the sixth one is a good memory. Of course, people who get dementia or Alzheimer, they start losing their memories, but it's a sign that something is going to, that your condition is deteriorating. Good memory is also a very important point. And then the last point for Osawa, the seventh point was more, uh, he called it like spiritual point is gratitude, sense of absolute justice and gratitude. For Osawa, this was a very important point. And the funny thing is that he gave points for every, uh, so you can kind of question yourself in the evening. Uh, how was my appetite? Uh, how, how do I sleep lately? Uh, am I not too tired all the time? Of course, if you, if you work in your garden for, for a couple of hours and you have some physical tiredness, but here this is more like, like mental fatigue also. And uh, have I not been taking myself too seriously? Am I quick in my reactions? The phone rings, I pick it up. How is my memory doing? So you can give yourself points. For the five, for the three first points you get, if you have the maximum, you have five. It's up to five. So together, if everything is perfect in that area, you have 15 points. The second, the psychological level, you get 10 points if you're okay. And for the spiritual one, you get 50 points. <laughs> so that, that was the way that Osawa was looking at things, you know, like the spiritual aspect of your being is the most important one. For me, it's interesting because every day I, I, I kind of question myself about this, about these points. Uh, instead of uh, doing a prayer in the evening, uh, just reflect in macrobiotics, they call it self-reflections. Self-reflection, how am I doing? Before any symptom occurs, can we go a little bit lower? Can we further up? Okay, thank you. Oriental medicine, so once again, in Oriental medicine, it's a question of adaptation. If you cannot adapt to changing of weather, changing of climate, if you cannot adapt easily to changing of situation, or you lose your courage or your fle physical flexibility. And I must say, when I teach to Shiatsu students, many Shiatsu students, they, they, they cannot sit in Seiza, for instance. And that's, that's, that's very sad because that proves they have no flexibility. Uh, I know nowadays that uh, in Japan even, uh, people have more and more problems, young people have more and more problems to sit in Seiza. I read some time ago. And even if you make a child sit in Seiza too long, it's considered child abuse. <laughs> But uh, we must wonder, why is that? Why is flexib flexibility going, going away? Maybe too, too much McDonald's food, too much junk food, maybe that might be a reason. And we, we come back to that point now, because 
mind and body are one mind body emotions it's, there's no separation the mind is a reflection of your body and your body is a reflection of your mind and what i think is very important this mr uh, Nyoti Sakurasawa, who is a, has, he changed his name because European people could not pronounce it well. He changed his name in George Osawa. He gave, he was very much interested in food because food is a transformation of your environment into yourself. Maybe I said it already, but the most intimate uh, contact you have with your environment is by eating it. <laughs> So you, you change what your environment into yourself. And this has a big and immense impact up, upon your, your physical, emotional and mental health. In Japan, they even go as far in the East as saying, with your food, you can change your mind, your thinking. And with your breath, you change your emotions or you control your emotions. So two of these uh, aspects are very important. Good food, good eating, and good breathing. Lately, I, uh, <clears throat> I read an article about, and one of the reasons that people get sick is because they breathe too much. But I think that's a misunderstanding. It's because they breathe too fast and too superficially. And once again, uh, I said that last time also, many people who come to my uh, practice the first couple of times, you hardly see them breathing. They don't breathe. Deep breathing, breathing is a kind of food. In, in macrobiotics, they consider you have uh, uh, physical food like rice and vegetables, you have liquid foods and you have gas food. It's gas. This food we need also. So breathing properly, breathing slowly and deeply, your uh, diaphragma moving, your hara breathing, that's very important. Not only for the practice of shiatsuma, also, but also for your own health. If you do not breathe deeply, then you do not eliminate because breathing out, you eliminate toxins. And it's very important. Otherwise, your lungs get stuck with all kinds of debris, all kinds of uh, uh, toxins, and uh, they, they, get, they get sick. If you get, if you get infected then by a virus or, or a bacteria, then you really get sick and you even, even, even die. That's what we have seen. Uh, so one of the reasons that people uh, are, are not surviving uh, a, a virus infection is that they, all their lives, they didn't breathe well and their lungs are not clean. But these hardening foods are in the, in the first place. Can we put it a little bit uh, larger again, if possible? Anyway, animal foods. Animal foods, if you eat too much animal foods and too little vegetables, then at some point, your body starts to get hard and unflexible. If you take a, a piece of meat, of steak, for instance, and you put it in, in, in vinegar, then it starts to harden. And one of the reasons that people have uh, hardening in their, their veins, their, uh, um, how you call that, the, 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 the stuff uh, bit, uh, between your bones, your, uh, how you call it again? The... Cartilage? Yes, yes, they, they start hardening and the harder they get, the more they get used, the more they, 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 they disappear slowly by friction. So uh, the, the cartilage should be flexible and renew itself. Uh, but if, if, you're, if, if, you if, if, if you eat too much meat, your, your blood is more acid, and then automatically this hardening starts of all the veins, of all the muscles of your, of your cartilage and so on. So uh, a second reason why uh, people uh, get hardening is because they eat too much, much uh, dairy food. 
And many vegetarians, they think they have to replace their meat by dairy foods. And at the same time, dairy foods are also uh, leading to acidosis. But there's another point, which is even, even uh, uh, more uh, uh, important is that in dairy food, there's a, a protein which is called casein. And casein is really hardening, hardening your body. At some point, I, I, have, I had a student and she was a painter. And when she wanted to make a new painting, she made like a canvas and a frame. And she put the canvas on the frame. And then she put casein on top. So the paint does not go too easily into the canvas when she starts painting. And then at some point when she put too much casein on the canvas, the day she let it dry for a night, the day after the whole frame was broken because this was so young, so contracting. So eating lots of dairy foods contains lots of casein, it's also hardening the body. Another problem there is that uh, it contains uh, IGF-1, insulin-like growth factor one. Insulin-like growth factor one is a growth factor, uh, which is exactly the same as one that we produce ourselves. So if you eat a lot of animal, uh, animal and dairy food, especially, then this growth factor is going to make things grow that should not grow. Uh, Professor Kestelot is a Belgian scientist and doctor who found out that the reason why people uh, get cancer, one of the main reasons is too much dairy food. He found out that in many countries where they smoke a lot, there's almost no lung cancer, like in China, in Japan, in uh, Cuba and, and uh, Turkey. But countries where they eat lots of dairy food, there's lots of lung cancer. So sugar also, sugar at some point hardens your body. That's why people who have diabetes too, they, they, they can have problems with uh, amputation, but the gangrene, hardening of the veins and the lack of blood circulation and degeneration of the extremities. Of course, smoking in itself also can be hardening and the lack of movement. So that means uh, if you want to keep healthy, in general, then it's important to uh, be aware of these things. Everybody has to decide for himself, but I believe that uh, uh, avoiding or limiting the first three, the first four, and practicing the last one is very important. Can we go on now? So how does shiatsu work is the next one. This is, uh, as I said, a theory that uh, Harada sensei came up with uh, like maybe 20, 25 years ago. And he, 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 he looked at it on four levels. First, you have the physical level. The touch, of course, that's what we do. By touch, by pressure, uh, by stretching and mobilizations, we open up a body. But interesting about this is the, the kind of touch, of course, you have different, you have strong touch and soft touch, but just touching, we need touching. People need touching. People need to hug. People sometimes, even people say that at least you need eight hugs a day. Uh, uh, I don't know if that is possible for everybody, but anyway, it's very important for your, emotional and your mental health and your physical health to be touched on a regular basis. And that's the problem with many people, they do not realize that. But interesting is that uh, the Nobel Prize for Medicine of nine, uh, 2021 uh, was uh, won by uh, uh, Dr. Dr. David, David uh, Julius and Ardon Pataputain. And they studied the receptors in the skin, uh, receptors for temperature and touch. 
because the, this, these points, there's very little evidence, uh, pure uh, scientific evidence about all this. This is like more hypo hypothesis. So there's very little evidence about all this, but I can just confirm that on the basis of my own experience. And that must be, that must be the case. So the physical effects, and nowadays, since these people, and they are continuing their research, of course, they have found the way that the nervous system and, and, and certain what they call ion channels, an ion is, is like a, a, an electron with a negative or a positive charge. So they, they have these channels of ions passing through the body and they, they gave the information to the brain of perception of heat and cold and touch and pressure and pain and, and physical pain and so on. And maybe at some point, if they continue this research, they might be able to prove at 100% the effects of uh, shiatsu. So a second point, which for Harada was very important is uh, the psych psychological part. So uh, here in the West, very often, if you say, well, I'm doing shiatsu, and this, this person got rid of this problem, and this person I helped with that problem, then a doctor will, will very often say, this is placebo effect. They believed in it, so it worked. And I, I, I can agree. If people believe in it, it, so it can help. Because it helps them especially to relax. There is trust. If there is trust for the, for the practitioner, if you can realize to, get, to have trust, then automatically they can relax better. And that's a very big element of uh, shiatsu relaxation. Uh, some time ago, a colleague of mine, he said, well, I have this patient there and he's always falling asleep when I treat him. And he does not cooperate. And in my in my view, that's great. If a person falls asleep, it means he's he's really trusting you at a hundred percent. And uh, a person, uh, a patient, should not cooperate, not doing anything. Just let it go. Just lose control. Let the subconscious work because healing is not going by the mind. Healing goes by the subconscious, not. So as a, for Harada, it was very important that he was always wearing a Japanese dress, haori and hakama, almost always. And even when he was wearing Western dress, always nice suit and a tie. He was, <laughs> he was always very keen on his presentation. So charisma, personality, maturity, age, experience, and that all leads to credibility. Um, of course, for a beginner, it's not always easy, but every, uh, as Japanese, one, one of my Japanese uh, Aikido teachers once said, uh, a, a trip or a voyage of 200 kilometers begins with the first step. So you have to you have to build that up your psychological uh, your charisma and you build that up by working by just doing it and by meditation and by being nice. I think it's very important that you become nice and peaceful, peaceful mind. That's another. Uh, without peaceful mind, there will not be peace. You cannot create peace if you don't have a peaceful mind. That means even if you have discussions or I don't have enemies. I have no enemies. I have only friends. And even people doing harm to me, I don't consider them enemies. They just, it's just, I mean, in fact, it's just a misunderstanding most of the time. Anyway, the third point or the third level on which Shiatsu works is the chemical level. And for, uh, yeah, there's a little mistake in the points. The chemical level, three, four, five, six, seven. That's the third point. Anyway, the chemical level, that means that if you touch a person, uh, then you have some change. And the kind of touch will 
will make a certain change. For instance, if, if, you, if you have a general treatment, shiatsu is very uh, rhythmical. If you, you, you go along a meridian and generally it's quite rhythmical. So in, in a way, a shiatsu treatment and one, once I had a, a musician as a clear client and he says, it, it was like you were dancing around me and, and it was kind of music, like a symphony, you know, like, and, and, and soft moments and hard moments. And it was like rhythmical. There, in a shiatsu treatment, you should ha have rhythm some natural rhythm and, and rhythmical movement in the body that creates serotonin. That, that's already point, uh, point, uh, point, point, point seven here. So I'm going backwards, I'm sorry. So also like sh gently shaking. I think it's kendiki. I'm not sure if that's the right word, but uh, soft shaking, rhythmical, uh, movements of uh, on the meridians, rhythmical movements on a certain point, press and release, press and release, that creates or produce of uh, serotonin. But the general movement is should be satisfying. Many people nowadays they they treat in a very harsh way, and of course once in a while a little a little punch or a little uh, some strong strong treatment can be can be uh, needed to wake up the chi. But it's important that the general treatment is, is, is agreeable. Sometimes people come to me and uh, what do you do? I'm doing shiatsu. Oh, I had it once and it was more Chinese torture. You know, it, it was not very pleasant. That, 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 I don't think that's a good idea because if it's at the end, they feel they experience it as a pleasant uh, happening, then dopamine will they will also they will want to come back <laughs> they will enjoy it i think and i read that from the beginning a shiatsu treatment should be enjoyable as a whole a little bit of pain that's not the problem but in general it should be agreeable strong pressure can be needed sometimes and strong and painful pressure but that's especially like pain killing it's anesthetic, can be useful, or to stir up the energy. Many people they, who are anesthetized, they take they, they pills against headaches and all kinds of pains, then they may need some kind of stimulation. So body energy starts to move. And if you use this strong pressure, then automatic endorphins are produced and your brain produces endorphins through this message along the ion channels as these doctors and these Nobel Prize winners found out. And then the soft touch, you might say that the strong pressure is like more technical and, 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 and more like a father and I will come back to that. The soft touch also should be there. You have to be mother and father at the same time when you do the shiatsu treatment. But soft touch produces serotonin, soft and agreeable and, uh, and uh, empathic touch. For instance, if you, you, you can, in Masunaga's book, uh, there is some drawing, like two, two people giving each other a hand. You can give a hand, which is, it's too bad that we cannot do it here. I cannot touch you, but you can give a formal hand, formal and short, or you give, can give a warm handshake. A handshake who comes from the heart. Some time ago, they, they sold cushions in the form of a heart with two arms. Your, your, arms are kind of an extension energetically of your heart. So from your hara, your energy goes up to the heart and from there it goes to your arms. So it's very important, like, like with your heart, you give the nice color to your touch. And that's very important. Not only hara, hara is pure energy, no color, no emotion, but the heart gives it color. Can we go a little further? Okay, uh, but I, I want I want to say something more about that. Uh, I guess you all know Namikoshi Sensei. Uh, Namikoshi uh, Tokijuro Namikoshi. 
He is the man, well, he's the, the founder of the Shiatsu College in Tokyo. Uh, and he was the person who kind of got Shiatsu recognized officially in Japan. I think it was in 1964. And uh, one of his, he was very popular, very, very well known. He came on television lots of times. And uh, all, even still now, this is their gesture. And they always kind of, if they meet each other, like Nota Sensei from Spain, always these uh, two thumbs, that was his gesture. And uh, at some point he had this uh, like little poem, Shiatsu no Kokoro, Haha no Kokoro. And we, if we go a little lower, can we go a little lower? Even more? The nervous system, we, we skip for now for the moment. Okay. Uh, and then about sickness also, we go further. And that's also not further, 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 even further. Yes, equality of touch. Yeah, that's it. So here you can see this. This is the, the poem of Masunaga. Shiatsu no kokoro, haha no kokoro. The heart of Shiatsu is like a mother's heart. And that's the most important one. And pressing the human body, I go, I go on in English, pressing the human body stimulates the source of life. And that is because, because we touch the brain. In Shiatsu, we do not only touch the body, we touch the heart of a person. We touch the Shen, we touch a person in, 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 in a very deep way on several levels. And then we go back to the former uh, point. <clears throat> yes, no, 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 all the way back where we, where we, yes, okay, little more, yes, now, yeah, okay, stop. Uh, yes, so the energetical point. And, but the problem is, for instance, like the, the existence yeah, here, so point, point eight, it says, says here, but uh, a little bit problem with the, with the numbers here. Anyway, the energetical point is by electromagnetic fields. I recently read a, um, an article how electricity is transferred. And these people, I, I don't understand it very much because it was very scientific, but they claim that electricity is not going through the thread to, to, this, uh, to the wire, but it's the electromagnetic fields which trans, transport energy. And if you look, uh, <clears throat> we are talking about this iron, uh, uh, these this iron channels. Uh, whenever you, these iron channels are not only at, 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 with, uh, in, in the body of the patient, of the client, but also the person who treats. And I remember from my studies in uh, physics, if you have like two, two pieces of metal, copper and iron, for instance. And if you put them together, there's an electromagnetic uh, stream going on. This, this creates electricity. And every person is, has another charge. Everybody is charged differently. And they call it bio bioelectricity. And this bioelectricity creates electromagnetic fields and electromagnetic charges. Everybody is different. So if you touch somebody automatically, there is some charge going on. And we could call this key. So the electromagnetic exchange between two people, between two beings, and that must work for a plant and for animals as well, then automatically there is some electromagnetic activity. So this might be a more scientific uh, approach of, or explanation of the effects of touch. And of course, if you go then, or you touch the energy channels, automatically these channels are influenced. But since I'm doing Seiki, I discovered that not only the meridians and not only the Tsubo can kind of exchange this effect or create this effect. Because in fact, your whole body is, uh, uh, can guide energy from top to toe. 
and some areas are more uh, open to that. But anyway, if you doubt about that, you put your fingers into the electric uh, electricity, then you will find very soon that your body is conductor. Our body is a conductor. And on this level, there's, there could be lots of research done uh, if ever these two Nobel Prize winners would uh, get interested in that. But once again, <clears throat> that means that the uh, shiatsu treatment is like a, you work on, on several levels at the same time. And the more you can kind of uh, maximize the effect on the different levels, the more wonderful your treatment will be. Do I still have some time? Yes. Okay, then we go a little bit more down. And this is also interesting, more from the point of view of the, uh, of the scientific or the more uh, <clears throat> physical point. Because Namikoshi, I talked about Namikoshi, and I talked about the Shiatsu College in Tokyo. They do not work, they work only on this uh, neurological level. Uh, and this, it's an interesting approach. They, they even deny the, the key and the energetical level. But even if they deny it, that doesn't mean it's not there. But anyway, they work on the level of the autonomous nerve system. And can we go a little bit more back, more down, please? Shiatsu and the autonomous nervous system a little bit more. So I, I, can, I can see the whole item. Person disappeared, my guide. Oh. Are you there? <laughs> I, I only can move what is on the screen. I cannot move further. Oh, no. Well, I, I see. Dance. It's the touch in and stimulates the PS Young activate. Yeah, yeah. I, I, ha I have it until he organs. Is there anything yeah. more? I did not print it out. Anyway, uh, it's, 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 I think in Shiatsu, I, I said that already, you have like the mother, the, the, the motherly or the, 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 the touch of the mother, which is caring and soft and gentle and as if you treat a baby. And you have the more strong approach to kind of make the energy, uh, awake the energy or get the energy going or, or awake a person in general. So you have strong pressure, which is yang, and you have soft pressure, which is yin, from this point of view. And the, uh, the soft pressure, is going to stimulate the parasympathicus, which is young. So yin pressure will stimulate the parasympathicus. Yin stimulates yang. And the young parasympathicus is going to stimulate the young para, the parasympathicus is going to stimulate the yin organs. I'm missing a point for to go on further. That means small intestines, liver, pancreas. Oh, 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 there we are again. So small intestine, sorry, large intestine, gallbladder, stomach, bladder, and triple heat. All the, you might say, the hollow organs are stimulated. So elimination, digestion is stimulated by yin. Yin stimulates yang, and yang stimulates yin. So the yin organs, elimination organs, are stimulated by soft touch. That's what it means. Do you follow me to a certain extent? So yin touch stimulates the parasympathicus. Parasympathicus stimulation stimulates the yin organs. If you have strong touch, stimulates the orthosympathicus. The orthosympathicus will stimulate, which is yin, stimulate the young organs. So in the shiatsu treatment, we have to look for, especially 
stimulating the parasympathicus. So the heart and the lungs and the liver calm down. In many ways, and due to people's lifestyle, all these organs are overcharged and overactive. What is this? Something is happening here, and I don't know what. Uh, but what, what do we need to do? Go I don't know. down? No, I don't know. Something showed up here. Okay, here we are again. Yeah. So strong pressure. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's what exactly what I was talking. Strong pressure is young and stimulates the autosympathicus, which is yin. If the autosympathicus is stimulated, then activates the young organs. The young organs, that, that, that means sometimes I do more young pressure at the end, just to wake up again, heart and lungs and liver. So people get to their senses. The autosympathicus is also has to do with the consciousness, with active consciousness. But the yin organs, such as small intestine, large intestine, gallbladder, are calmed down because the orthosympathicus is, a, is needed to be active, physically active. So at that point, your digestion slows down, your elimination, like your large intestine, if you're active, you're going to run. The moment that you run, it's not good to have to defecate, I, want to say, uh, I may say. So the, it's important to know, in fact, the conclusion is here that during the treatment, I would prefer to stimulate in a soft way with soft touch. And more to the end of the treatment to wake people up and to create uh, an, an, a, a, a possibility of getting active again, more strong pressure. Also, the back side of the body, the back side of the body is the best way to kind of nourish organs, I might say, through the U points, they call it, like the points on the bladder, the U points on the back. And you will see if a person is laying on his stomach, he doesn't get cold easily. When he's laying on his back with the front to the sky, I might say, they are getting uh, cold easily. And that's because the, the body starts to kind of eliminate. So the front, the elimination goes to the front, energetically speaking. The energy comes in through the back. And even the psychologists know that if you look, if somebody looks at you very strongly to your back, you can feel it. So the energy comes more in to the back and goes out to the front. <clears throat> and maybe last, last thing I want to talk about because I, I have still uh, other possibilities and other things which I can uh, uh, discuss about. But uh, Kumiko asked me, if I remind well, to do something uh, practical with you. And yeah. I'd like to do some, what they call a uh, gyoki with you now. And because the, the capacity, I, I said, if you touch a person, automatically there's an electri electromagnetic charge going on. Uh, you can influence and you can improve this capacity of touch so that the effects of everything you do will be much bigger. And an exercise, an exercise to, uh, to improve, like your, your, your hands, of course, people, some people work with the elbows, some people still work with the knees. I never do that anymore. I learned all this also with the feet and the knees and the elbows. I think you don't have lots of sensibility in your, in your knees and your elbows. So personally, I, I prefer to work with the hands. And let's all just calm down for, for a second. And uh, 
<clears throat> and go to our breathing. You don't have to close your eyes. You can look kind of with an open eye to the screen. And you breathe in through your nose. And you breathe out to your mouth. And I guess you all know Chomai or the central channel, or you can, if you don't know this, uh, this idea, you can work uh, along the spine. When you breathe in, you kind of pull your energy up from your anus to your head. And when you breathe out through your mouth, you let the energy go down from your, the point of your head, governing vessel 21, down to your hara. And once more in and out. And then we do a little exercise. I'm going to sit a little bit more back. We are going to lift our arms. When you will be inspired, in, in, breathe in and lift. Stop the breathing. You make fists, your thumbs in your fists. Stop your breathing for a second and then breathe out and Lower your arms, but push your head and your shoulders backwards, breathing out. And when your hands are at shoulder height, just relax. Suddenly relax. Once more, we inhale, we stretch. We can look at the sky, stop the breathing, make fists, breathe out. Push your head and your shoulder blades back, lower your arms, breathing out, breathing out, breathing out, breathing out, and suddenly relax. Once more, last time, inhale, stop the breathing, fists, and lower your arms, pushing your back, your shoulder blades and your head backwards, little tension, 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 and relax. And wait a second. Observe your breathing. This is a very good exercise to start the treatment. Sometimes I do that together with my clients. So they get completely calm, the breathing already changes. And then we take the gasho position. The gasho position, your hands like 45 degrees in front of you, not like this, relaxed, shoulders relaxed. You keep breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth and you imagine that you breathe in through your fingertips and breathe out through your palms. Just imagine. Important to know is your hands are not glue together, only the borders, the fingertips and the borders of your palms. So there's a, an empty space between your hands. So you breathe into your fingertips and you breathe out through your palms and you imagine that a little ball between your hands is forming as if you blew up a beach ball, every time you breathe out, this ball is getting stronger. Also, maybe a little accent, if you breathe in, lean a little bit back. If you breathe out, lean a little bit to the front. 
so you can move. Now this ball is getting bigger and your hands are separating. And you may feel some interaction between both hands. Some kind of vibration. And if you feel that you can start playing with it. And you can start moving your hands and see if this tension or this interaction, this vibration is still there. You can slowly move positions up and down, up opening all the way up also exploring your own body limits, but always both hands are connected. Like an energy ball, which is changing its shape. This exercise is called in Seiki, it's an energetic shiatsu style. It's called gyoki. And sometimes this ball is getting very big, filling the whole room, pushing you a little bit back, uh, and then it's getting smaller again. And also we explore our flexibility to the left, to the right, to the back. But both hands are all the time, all the time connected. And then slowly the ball is getting smaller and smaller again. And both hands are approaching. until you're sitting in the prayer position again, gasho position, and you breathe in and bend a little bit back and breathe out, bend a little bit to the front. So this is, you might call this meditation. Harada Sensei used to say meditation it's simple, it's breathing like Buddha. And breathing like Buddha is like breathing like a baby. So it's simple, meditation is simple, just breathing like a baby. But whereas in most meditation, you have to sit still, in Seiki, we move a little bit. We breathe in and we move a little bit to the back and we breathe out, we move a little bit to the front. Observe what you feel. Sometimes people feel, I'm not going to say what. I'm just going to question you now. This is an exercise. If you want to develop your energetic skills, this is an exercise which you can do all the time. It's very simple and it's very practical. Actually, in Seiki, I have written a, a whole book with all, at least 50 exer Seiki exercises. But this one is the most important. Gasho Gyoki. The key exercise in the prayer position. And to stop the exercise, we blow between our hands. And it's finished. Okay. Wonderful, Franz. 
Thank you. Thank you, Welcome. wonderful. Welcome. So energized. Mm -hmm. Wonderful presentation. We You're done welcome. again. Thank you. Did, did, did anybody feel anything in his hands or not? Oh, yes, absolutely. Mm. Energy. Okay, yeah. And it's, it's very simple. You do this regularly or you can do this with, especially also the preparation that makes you relax your shoulders. Because if your shoulders are tense, then energy stops or it's not so good, it's, it's not working so well. So always relax your shoulders. And this energy tense and then relax, relax your shoulders, okay? That is a great exercise. Um, for those who spend a lot of time in front of computer and phones, which is all of us, I guess. So is there anybody who has questions? No questions? Okay. When is the next lecture? <laughs> <laughs> Nadine said, thank you, France and Kamika and everyone. Laura yeah. said, thank you, France. Simple and You're effective. Very welcome. You're very welcome. Anyway, the, uh, just about, I, I, if does everybody has the document, this document that yes. I made? Yes. But I, I have, I have, I told, I promised it was the last version I sent to you, but I have another version again. <laughs> Okay. I'm content, con so I will send you the next version, the last, absolutely last version, and then you can kind of share it with everybody. And the things that are on this, uh, on my paper, it's not something you have to learn by heart. Just read it, think about it, and especially try to understand the principles behind it. It's not something you have to kind of do an examination for or anything. Just read it, try to understand. And if you have any questions, you always can send me also an email. You know, I, 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 have, I have time to, to communicate if you want to, okay? Thank okay, you. thank you so much. And Dola uh, said in the comments, I make the ball so small enough that it, uh, small into a pill and then I ate it. The energy ball, small yes. into a pill and he ate it. Oh, really? Good. <laughs> Good. Uh, how, how, how do you learn the, the, um, the energy exercises? How do you, how do you learn it? The exercise. Yeah. The energy exercise. Yeah. Just by doing it. It's very simple. So if you do, I, 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 once again, I have 50 exercises, but what we did now is the most important one. There are more, but this is the most important one. Just first relax, bring up, fists. Tense, lower the arms and relax. And then do gyoki, just sit. Just sit and wait, sit and breathe. Important is your hands are not fixed together. There's like some space. Your hands are relaxed. All your articulations are relaxed. So there's some space between your hands. And then you imagine you breathe into your fingertips, you breathe out to your, to your palms, the center of your palm. Uh, circulation eight, pericardium number eight. You imagine you breathe out there and then you start feeling the energy and then you start experimenting with it. It's, it's like a, some kind of spontaneous Tai Chi. And then you close again. And once, once again, if you breathe in, you breathe into your nose. If you breathe out, you breathe out to your mouth. But is it, is also, it written down in a, like a, you know, a list? Is it available? No, just in the beginning, I did this, the beginning I did this moving up and down of the energy in the central channel. But you forget about that later in the exercise. 
You just breathe, nothing else, breathe in and out. And when you breathe in, you move a little bit back. So if, if I sit sideways, when you breathe in, when you breathe in, you move a little bit back and also your hands raise a little bit. And if you breathe out, you lower a little bit, like a tree in a soft wind. It's very simple. That's the, and that's the most important exercise. The other exercise is uh, you have to come to Belgium. <laughs> <laughs> or I come to you. Where are you from? New York. New York. Okay, I come to New York then. <laughs> I'd rather come to Belgium. <laughs> okay, that's okay. But well, anyway, <laughs> depend, <laughs> de depends on the war situation. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So, are, are are the exercises written down to follow in writing? Are they written down yeah. somewhere? Uh, this exercise, yeah, um, yeah, I, it's in my book. But uh, you know, maybe I will I will make a document with this exercise, and in 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 a week or two, because I'm going on a vacation. Uh, now, be beginning of April, you can send me an email. I try to make a document of this exercise, and then I can send it to you. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, and is Do it you possible have my email address or is it possible to buy your book? It's possible to buy my book, but uh, the, to, to the United States, uh, it's about it's it, it's it's 10, 10 euro. My book costs twenty euro, and uh, the the sending it is 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 already about ten euro, and. Uh, and then you have bank charges. If you have uh, PayPal, then that may be more easy. But you can buy my book if you send me an email. Yeah, yeah. If if you have any questions, let's 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 say let's say it like that. If you have any questions, you can always send me an email, and I can explain. Uh, I can explain more about my book or about my activities and so. On. Is that a good idea? Great, right. like wonderful. Thank you, Franz. You're welcome. Thank you everybody You're welcome. for joining today. The world is changing. Shared people, we need to connect, unite. And yes. let's see you soon. Have a great yes. week. Be safe. See you. Let's continue. Have a to nice pray. weekend. Thank you. And uh, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you, Franz. Thank you. Goodbye. And thank you Goodbye. Thank for joining. Goodbye. Bye. Uh, this was the second lecture by Franz. Uh, you can watch his first lecture on our YouTube channel. Uh, this today uh, will be also uploaded in a couple of days. Uh, we will have more presentations by Franz. Two more, right? Is that correct? Yes, yes, that's yes. right. So two more. And uh, soon we will have our second anniversary as Global Shed's Virtual Gathering. <laughs> started in 2020 in April. So thank you for those who are with us and for new ones, uh, those who join us for the first time today. All the lectures are on our YouTube channel. Please visit, subscribe, comment. Thank you and shots for all. Let's heal this world. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Thank I will you. be leaving now. See you. you, have a nice day, bye. bye. Bye.